Hello everyone, we're going to begin our discussion of MP completeness now. This is a topic that you could easily spend several courses studying. We will begin by studying a very, very narrow amount of this topic. So let's begin with a classic problem. A classic problem in this field is the traveling salesman problem. This says that given a graph, what is the minimum weight path from one node to another node that visits every single vertex exactly once. This looks very similar to our shortest path idea, but we need to visit every vertex along the path. So it seems like it should be relatively similar, right? So let's try something similar. Let's say we tried to be greedy. We take this decision because that's pretty greedy. We take this decision because that's pretty greedy. We take that decision and then we take this decision, and then this decision, being as greedy as possible, always taking the path that's the least cost. And now, it's a bit unfortunate because we can't revisit any old nodes, so I can't go back to any of the nodes along this path. So I kind of have to go along this top rail up here. And let's see what the cost of that is. The cost of that path is two plus three plus two plus three. 3 plus 3 plus 2, all that's great. Then plus 9 plus 8 plus 9, that's real sad. So we have 5, 10, 15, plus 17, 26. So this is a cost of 41. And that seems maybe not too bad. Can we do Better though, I want you guys to try and find a shorter path that touches every vertex exactly once in this graph. It is possible. Try and play around for a minute or two and just see if you can come up with a better way. Try and diagnose why is this path in particular very bad and see if you can avoid that issue. So try and do that, see what you can do. Hopefully you can figure it out. All right, so here is my recommended path, we go here, we go here, we go here, we go over here, we go over here, we go over here, and then we go up here, over there, over there. Let's see if this is better. So we have cost is equal to four, plus two, plus four, plus three, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus eight, plus nine. Let's see how this does. So we have 10, 15, 22, 30, 39. So we did better. You might be able to do better than this, but it turns out that this is not an easy problem. In fact, what we are going to start studying in this unit is not algorithms, but problems. Notice, I didn't give you an algorithm here. I just said this is the traveling, traveling salesman problem. We we're going to start studying hard problems, and we're going to have some understanding of what a hard problem is. One logical way that you might try to make this easier is to try to simplify the problem and see if that can help you get a better solution. So instead of saying, what is the shortest path? That's a very complicated question. It, maybe there's a couple other ways you might think about how to word this. So let's scroll down. We have a couple of different ways to look at simpler problems, problems that seem like they should be easier than the traveling salesman problem. So here's our op traveling salesman problem, which we might call an optimization problem, like your Calc 1 optimization. You're talking about finding the best thing. This is a classic field of mathematics, trying to find the best solution to a certain problem. You can study the heck out of it if you want, try and find good solutions to these problems. An alternative question that seems like it should be easier is, given the graph and all of the vertices and everything, is there a path that has a cost less than whatever they provide as input? So, for example, is there a path with cost less than 40 in this graph? That seems like it should be an easier question, but it turns out to be identical to the one we just asked, that doesn't help. So maybe even easier, let's push back even further. Let's ignore the costs entirely. Is there a path from V1 to V10 that touches every vertex exactly once? That seems like a much easier problem, right? 
So we have the Hamiltonian path problem. Given a graph and uh, starting an end vertex, is, is there a path from V1 to Vn that visits every vertex exactly once? Seems, again, much easier. In fact, I can actually prove to you it's a bit easier in some sense of easier. So let's look at what I mean by that. We're going to talk about a reduction. A reduction is taking some problem and reducing it to another problem in the sense that you're going to take the first problem and if you can solve the second problem, you can solve the first problem. So you take Q1, question one, and reduce it to question two. If you can solve question two, if we can solve Q2, then we can solve Q1. This is the idea. We're taking Q1 and mapping it in some way to Q2. We're saying if we do the following sort of trickery, we can rewrite this problem in terms of this problem. An example of this would be, let's say you wanted to find an element in an array. One way to do that would be to sort the array and perform binary search on that array. That may not be efficient, but that solves the problem with things you've already defined. So that is one example of reduction. We can reduce the Hamiltonian path problem to the traveling salesman problem. We have a little bit of a proof here for us. We say we're going to take an instance of a particular version of the problem and rewrite it as a particular version of the other problem. So we're given an instance an instance of a Hamiltonian path problem, which is just a graph and some vertices. Notice, it's not a solution or anything, it's just an instance of the problem. It's, this is what the setup is. If this was an array sorting problem, it would be, give me an array. That's the, that's the instance. We're then going to make a different graph that we're going to solve the traveling salesman problem on. So we're going to make a weighted graph G prime and just put one as all the edge weights. So given a graph, make a graph with edge weight one for everything. Really straightforward. And then we're going to call this new graph an instance of the traveling salesman problem. And we're gonna say the cost is N. If we can find a path from V1 to Vn in this new graph with cost less than n, so less than 10 in this case, then we will have found the Hamiltonian path because the cost of each edge is one. So if I can do something to find the path inside of this graph and I can get the cost to be nine, which is less than 10, I will have found nine edges, which will be the number of edges in the Hamiltonian path from V1 to V10. So. With this, if you give me a Hamiltonian path problem, I can say, no, 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 no. I can solve the traveling salesman problem instead, and then I can solve the Hamiltonian path problem. This is called a reduction. We're reducing the Hamiltonian path problem to the traveling salesman problem. This does not mean that the thing we're reducing it to is necessarily easier. It's just saying, all I care about is that I can solve this other problem. This is, might be the single most important skill, not this one in particular, but taking a problem that is hard and rewriting it in terms of another problem might be the single most important skill for scientists and engineers to have. You could argue about that, but this is a very important thing that you want to be able to do, being able to take something and rewrite it in some terms of something else that you know a lot about. That is a very important skill. The last thing I'll mention in this video is that with reference to those decision problems of is there a thing, is there a Hamiltonian path, we say that they are verifiable in polynomial time. If every instance with an answer yes, there is some solution, S is an abstract idea of a solution, which you can use to check that the answer is in fact yes. So if I give you the answer, can you check it? Hamiltonian path, it's really easy. If I tell you, for example, that the following path is a Hamiltonian path, this path here, the one we found earlier, it's really easy to check. You just check, does it visit each vertex once? And does it start at the start and end at the end? Really easy. So it's very easy to check the problem. You can verify that the answer is yes. That is a different thing from finding the answer. And we'll talk about that in more detail in future videos.